you are going to need uh, cellophane rectangles. I always pre-cut uh, a few, this way it's easier and quicker when I have to roll multiple cones. Um, I never measured them exactly, but if you need an estimate, they are around 15 to 8 to 10 uh, centimeters. Then you are going to need uh, tape. Uh, I use uh, this brand, I use scotch tape and uh, when you choose your tape, make sure you always choose transparent tape. Yeah, that's in French. Transparent tape. <laughs> because other varieties like uh, invisible tape uh, won't last if you put your cones in the freezer or if they get wet. So transparent tape will stick even though it's wet. And then you're going to need uh, sharp scissors. It's important to have sharp scissors because when you cut the cellophane, you usually don't cut like this. You just make a little dent and then slide the scissors so it draws a straight line with no little cuts that will make the cone rolling more difficult. So now let me zoom you in a little closer so I can show you the actual process. So the first step, which is also the most important, is to roll and seal the tip of the cone. So before I start, I always pre-cut uh, tiny bits of tape and I stick them uh, to the edge of my table so this way I don't lose time cutting little pieces every time so I will do that and then show you what it looks like and I use my scissors for that not the tape dispenser because it doesn't uh, leave little uh, dents it makes a straight edge for this first step you don't need to cut large or long pieces, just small rectangles are fine. So I'm going to show you what it looks like from my view. So as you can see, my little tapes are all ready to use and accessible. And I just leave uh, the rest of the roll here. Now let's start the real stuff. You're going to start rolling the cone on the large part of the cone, not the shorter edge you will need to start rolling the cone around here. See, this is the sheet around here. You can see, I hope so. Okay. So, throughout the whole process, you need to make sure the tip is secured because if you don't hold the tip of the cone, it's gonna, wi it's gonna widen. So I will show you once from this side and then I'll turn the camera so you can see from a personal view what it looks like. So I use my index and my thumb and I pinch the cone, still holding the spot where the cone, the cone tip will be. And I roll it and then pinch with my two other fingers so you see there's already a little beginning of comb then I use my finger and middle finger uh, my index finger and middle finger put it inside the comb roll and I'm still pinching with this tip so it's nice and secure and then I roll it again, pinch, roll it again, pinch, roll it again, pinch, roll it again. Now I'm gonna switch to my thumb and I'm gonna put it inside the cone and I'm gonna slide the inner layer. You see that inner layer? I'm gonna slide it to make the cone tighter because you know you see now it's very wide. 
So I'm sliding, sliding it and I'm letting go a bit of the tip just to allow it to slide. So now it has a better shape. It's not as wide anymore. Now, what's important is that you fix the tip because now the tip is extremely wide. It was gonna make thick lines and that's not what you want. So I'm gonna use my tongue once again and go inside the cone. And while my index finger pushes the outside of the cone towards the tip, like that, my thumb is gonna pull on the inner layer towards the opening here. So, as you can see, and the more I do that, the thinner the tip gets. So, as you can see, it's getting very thin. And that's what I like. So, some people use pins at this point. I just look through the tip and see if it's the size that I want. I just do it approximately. So, usually what I do is I look through the tip of the cone towards a dark surface. So, this way I can see the opening. So, I just look through the cone now it's way too wide for me so i'm going to do the same thing and pull it on the inner layer while i slide my index finger downwards like this so i'm gonna look through it again now it looks around the right size for me so now this step is extremely important because once you have the correct tip, the one that satisfies you. You need to make sure it doesn't move. Otherwise it's gonna close or widen or the sheets, the layers are going to get separated. So I'm gonna grab my little tape. See how easy it is when it's already in set. And I'm going to place it Wait a second, yeah, right here on the corner. You see, like this. And now I'm going to firmly pinch the whole cone. So my thumb is inside and my index finger is outside and I'm pinching really hard. And with my thumb that is here, I flatten the flap. This way it doesn't move and it stays the same. Then I just adjust. And you see I'm flattening the tape and it sticks. Oh, the most difficult part is done. <laughs> Don't worry if you didn't understand a thing and you tried and it didn't work. It definitely takes a lot of practice. I don't like rolling cones. In fact, I hate it. And it took me a lot of practice to master it. After that, uh, it's fairly easy. You're just going to need to tape all the seams, as I call them, the all the flaps. So for that, I use a little more tape and now I use uh, other sizes. So I roll, uh, I cut, some tape of different sizes. This step is easier, but it's also very important. What I do is I find the seam, now it's there. I stick it directly on the seam and you're going to flatten it so you don't uh, move the flaps around. So I just taped it, use another one. Yeah, sometimes you have to look to find the little uh, flaps, especially with the clear cellophane. You see, I'm sticking it 
and then I just flatten the, the tape on the coat. And just the last little one. Okay, so now I'm gonna move you to see from my side what it looks like because you are going to make it yourself, right? 